Hi all, in this video we will be going over an example problem from the notes. The question is, what is the minimum velocity a rocket on the Earth's surface needs such that it escapes Earth's gravitational attraction? So the sort of thought you could be thinking of is if you jump up, you're going to fall back down. Now if you jumped up with an initial velocity large enough, you would no longer fall down back to the center of Earth and you wouldn't even be trapped in its orbit. So a couple things we'll just define is Me is the mass of the Earth, little m is the rocket mass, big R is the radius of the Earth. And we sketch the situation here where we have the Earth and the rocket on the scale, and the center to center distance between them is s. What we can do is we can write the force on the rocket as a function of s. That's going to be equal to g, gravitational constant, big M, sub e, little m, over s squared. That's the magnitude. And now the direction is negative r hat. And that's because we're saying that the center of the Earth is 0. So this is positive r hat. Actually, any point going out away from. And this force is attractive, so this f here goes to the center of the Earth. So that's f. So we have this force, and now what we want to do is calculate the work. So what we'll do is we'll remember that the work is the integral from where we start. We'll say that we'll start at big R, and then we'll go to some arbitrary R, and that this is F of S, and this is dS. So I'm going to erase all this, just rewrite this so we can do some algebra actually calculus first and then algebra. So the limits going from big R to little r of f of s which is minus big G m e m over s squared ds. We can pull out the g and the m's because they're constants and we'll leave the minus sign in there. These aren't going to be divided by anything. I'll write them on the same level as g. So we're integrating from big R, this is the radius to the Earth, out to wherever this rocket makes it. And then we have minus 1 over s squared ds. So now we have to figure out what the antiderivative of minus 1 over s squared is. And that is going to be 1 over s. So we can see that here. If we take the derivative of 1 over s, so if we do d ds of 1 over s equals d ds plus the negative 1, so you pull down the negative 1, so you get minus, and then you uh, subtract 1 from that, so it's going to be minus 1 s to the minus 2 equals minus 1 over s squared. Now we just have to evaluate this, so our work will be big G m e little m 1 over little r minus 1 over big R. Now this quantity here is going to be negative because this r is going to be larger than this one. So this quantity is going to be smaller and this will be larger, so this will be negative as a whole. Now we'll compare this work to the change in kinetic energy. So we'll remember that work equals delta ke, and that's going to be 1 half m v final squared minus 1 half m v initial squared. So we can compare these two. So we'll have 1 half m v f squared minus 1 half m v i squared is equal to g m e little m over r minus 1 over big R. Now we have to make some simplifications. So we want to know what the minimum velocity is um, when we're shooting it off from the Earth. So that means that we're looking for the smallest velocity that it's shot with, such that it has, that it reaches its final destination. So that means that the smallest that the final velocity can be with it still getting there is going to be zero. So we can just get rid of this term. 
And the other thing we need to remember is that we want the force due to gravity on the rocket to be as small as possible. So that means we're going to have to take r as r goes to infinity so that the u of r going to infinity is pretty much zero because that means the force will also be zero. So we can get rid of this term. And we're just left with 1 half mv i squared is equal to minus g m e m over big R. We can cancel these m's, cancel the negatives, and then solve for v squared. So we'll get v i squared one half is equal to g m e over big R of v i squared equals 2g over me over big R. And then solving for vi, we're going to get square root of 2g me over big R. So this is our final result. And what's interesting that you can note is that this is independent of pretty much anything about the rocket. It's the gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth.